Right, Mr. Palmer here again. A little video for you again on stacks, continuing with the theme of data structures. Third take on this one. Hopefully, it works out properly this time with all the animations that going as expected. Okay, so before you continue with this video, make sure you go over your notes on data structures and arrays. Look over recursion, mainly focusing on what the uh, the um, disadvantages of recursion are. Little problems with it. Okay. So here I am waiting for you to go over your notes. La -di -da, -di -da, -di da So big questions for this little video. What is a stack? And how do you prevent stack overflow and underflow? So a stack is a bit like this. If you're lucky enough for someone to be making pancakes for you, they will keep stacking them up. And the first pancake that you will take will be the last one that gets put on to the stack of pancakes. So Stacking essentially is what we call a last in, first out data structure. So using a stack is a bit like this. The data items come in. Okay, we store them in our in memory. So I'm continuing with the same kind of diagram of memory that I've been using previously, where the numbers down the left hand side obviously represent the memory addresses. And as the items arrive, the stack pointer, okay, usually the stack pointer is stored in a register. Uh, points at a memory address okay as the new data items are put in the stack in pointers incremented to point at the most recent location all right uh, convention here to pay attention to is that probably limitation of the OCR textbook usually uh, we would items would arrive and go into the highest possible memory value okay so they would usually start at 32 and the next one that would arrive going to 31 and 30, 29, whatever. So logically, they're going towards the smallest memory address. So conceptually, we can visualize them going in and the new items going on top each time. OK, but for the purpose of matching with the OCR textbook, I'm matching up with their diagram. OK, uh, if you need to remove an item, the stack pointer will decrement to point at the next item down the stack. Notice that the items have not been removed from memory, only the stack pointer has changed, right? This is why sometimes when you start uh, referencing variables, uh, you can get errors, okay? Or you have an initialized variables, you can get an error. So if you use an array to create a stack, I've got my array, pizza eight eight elements in it okay stack point is currently pointing at array element zero okay the index is zero so as my items arrive my stack pointer gets incremented to show where the most recent item to be popped is all right you can see why a stack is useful in this case because i'm putting my ingredients in all right as i pop them i'm able to pop them in the order that i want them to be used so I can put the first item to be popped will be my sauce, followed by my onions, followed by my sweet corn, followed by my cheese, followed by my chilies, etc. etc. Okay, last in, first out, lifo. Stack overflow occurs when your stack is full. A data item arrives. Where are you going to put it? Got no space for it. Okay, so we have a problem here where there's no memory left, but it's overflowed. So how do you push data items onto a stack? Well, if your stack pointer is smaller than the maximum stack size, then you can increment the stack pointer and then you can push a data item onto the stack. So your stack at the stack pointer will be equal to the new data item. If that condition is not satisfied, then you've got a stack overflow because you, your stack pointer has hit the maximum possible size of the stack. Underflow occurs when you want to pop an item and sometimes you might hear someone call it pulling an item. So you want to pop an item from the stack, but there's nothing there. So how do you check if the stack is empty? If your stack pointer is greater than zero, then 
you can retrieve an item from the stack and you can store that into the data item okay and then you can decrement your stack pointer to move down the stack otherwise you have a stack overflow some of you might automatically think hang on a minute if I'm using an array to create my stack then uh, my stack pointer my uh, index is going to be zero for the first element so you know if your index is going to be zero for the first element how could you figure out if the stack was empty or not you'd put something there for you to think about applications of stacks first one to think about the most common one is procedure calls okay where uh, you're running a program called procedure a and so you stick in the address a return address for the instruction for a and any other uh, local variables for a and even the contents of any cpu registers etc so you're off running procedure b procedure b calls procedure c so you need to store the return address and any local variables for b and c calls d so on and so forth and then as they return back up the chain you can pop those off the stack and return processing down the chain of calls okay it's called a call stack backtracking is another important one right so say you've got some sort of problem solving approach where you are trying to solve a problem you reach a conclusion but the conclusion is incorrect and you need to work your way back okay for example navigating through a maze okay another example of backtracking is the undo function where you perform a series of steps you don't like it undo 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 and it takes you back to a previous state reverse polish notation is something that we are going to cover in a few weeks time so when we've done that reverse polish notation it might be worth coming back to stacks and having a look at how a stack can be used to um, uh, manage the process of reverse pol polish notation and finally managing interrupts which you should remember anyway from scheduling okay so big questions for this video you should now know what a stack is and you should be able to answer the question of how do you prevent stack overflow and underflow by regurgitating that's the word regurgitate algorithms okay you should know how those algorithms work thank you very much and uh, Spencer Palmer signing off. You should have another video on trees coming at you quite shortly.